Hey everybody, how's it going? Connor here today at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Decancha Voyager Trailer Brake Controller here on our 2021 Jeep Gladiator. So there's really going to be two main types of trailer brake controllers. Number one, we have a time delay brake controller. And number two, we have a proportional brake controller, which is what our Voyager is. Now, time delay brake controllers are sort of old, outdated technology sort of how they sound is when we're pressing the brakes in our Jeep, there's going to be a delay between that and when they get applied in our trailer. Whereas with the proportional, it's going to be instant. So as soon as we press the brakes in our Jeep here, we're going to get that braking force applied directly to our trailer. Now we also have the automatic proportional operation, which is going to adjust the intensity of our trailer brakes in regards to that of how we're applying them in the tow vehicle. So say we're out in the highway, somebody comes over in our lane there, we really need to slam on our brakes. The brake controller is gonna send a signal to our trailer immediately, and it's really gonna grab on those brakes nice and tight, helping us come to a stop much sooner. As opposed to when we're just moseying around in town, we're just coming to a slow, gradual stop. We're just barely pressing that brake pedal. It's gonna apply that same force to the trailer, nice, slow, and easy. So the Deconcha Voyager is gonna be an excellent brake controller option here for our Gladiator. It's sort of the no frills brake controller option, if you will. It does still have some of the great features that other top tier options have, such as the P2 and P3, in that it has a proportional design, but we're not gonna be paying for all those extra bells and whistles, such as that fancy LED display or the color changing displays. So although we're not gonna need it for our Gladiator here, our Voyager will work with trailers with up to four axles. Chances are we're only gonna be towing trailers with one to two axles, so the Voyager is still going to be a perfect option for that. So here's what our brake controller is going to look like when we have hooked up. We're going to have this green LED light on top, letting us know our trailer is connected. Now when we don't have a trailer connected, there actually won't be any lights at all. So we don't have to worry about those bothering us, usually when we're driving at night. But the operations of this unit are very, very simple. It's definitely one of the easier ones to work. We have the most basic feature that's carried over on all brake controllers, is we have our manual override here. And what we see when we apply that manual override is our light changing from green to red. On the side here, we're gonna have our gain adjustment. So our gain adjustment is gonna be how much power we're sending to the brakes. So on some brake controllers, you may have an actual readout with some numeric values, but for this one, you're gonna be able to tell the amount of power you're sending based on the color of the light. It'll change from green to orange to red with red being the most powerful, dim, and green being least powerful. So let's go ahead and hold the manual override now, and we'll adjust our lever here. You can see we're turning the brakes down. It's going from green to orange to red at full power. We'll also have the same sequence of the light changing colors while we're pressing the brake pedal in our Jeep. However, keep in mind that this is a proportional brake controller so if you're just trying to test the brake controller when you're sitting still and hitting the brakes, it won't actually change the color of the light here. So we can see our controller is turning to dim orange. It isn't actually going to red. We are sensing a little bit, but it's not actually getting the full force because again, we're not gonna be moving. So the only other knob here on this brake controller is gonna be on the left-hand side here. And this is basically a level adjustment knob. You'll use this to fine tune your setup during the setup procedure of the brake controller. Now that we've gone over some of the features of our brake controller here, let's go ahead and jump into that installation so we can show you how to install it. So the first step of our installation of our brake controller, we need to locate on the vehicle our tow package port for the brake controller. So that's gonna be the first thing we're gonna do now before we actually mount the controller, which is gonna bring us to our next thing here, is that our required harness that we have is gonna be this Takancha harness here. This is gonna plug in one end to the factory tow package port on the vehicle, and the other end is gonna plug into our brake controller. So keep in mind, this is sold separately, and you will need this for this installation. But now, let's go ahead and look underneath the dash here, see if we can find the factory tow package port for the brake controller. It's gonna match the end of this. It's gonna be a gray square connector with four pins inside. This is the male version. We're gonna see the female version on the vehicle here. So let's go ahead and try to find that now. So here's what the factory plug looks like. It was pretty much just tucked behind this metal bracket we see here. But as we can see, that's gonna match the end of that harness that we just showed you. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to take that brake controller harness and we're going to plug it in to the end of the factory port on our vehicle here. So it's only going to go in one way. You're going to see these tabs at the top here. Should be able to lock it in place pretty easily. We should hear it click when it is successfully locked into place. And there we go. So once we have our wiring harness plugged in, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find a place to mount the brake controller. Now, we have a little bit of preference here. A lot of customers like to mount it over here by the right knee, but due to how this vehicle is designed, that could get in the way of your right knee actually. So what we've determined the best place to be is gonna be down here, sort of where our left leg would be, right by this kick panel. We've already sort of tested this location here, got in and out of the Jeep a couple times. We didn't have any issues with hitting ourselves or hitting our legs on it. So that's probably gonna be the best location here. Granted, again, we have some preference here, but we are limited to the confines of the length of our harness here. So what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna take our harness here for our brake controller. What you wanna do now, you wanna go ahead and line that up with the controller. You can see here, we've already used the self-tapping screws that come in our kit here. We just went ahead and threaded that through a couple times into the actual brake controller. Therefore, once we get the brake controller in position on the bracket, it'll be, little be, it'll be a little bit easier just to screw those in. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually take our brake controller bracket here. We're gonna attach it down here where we said we were gonna mount it. Now it's kind of hard to see, but on the very bottom of this panel, there is actually a little flat surface here. So it contours down to a flat surface. That flat surface is where we're gonna mount that bracket there. So we're gonna use the self-tapping screws that come in our kit. We're gonna go ahead and attach that now. Get that one started. We'll come back and put the other one in. We can tighten those both down. So we can see now we got the bracket nice and secure. Now we'll take our brake controller here and plug our two pigtails in together. And finally, we'll mount the brake controller to our mounting bracket here. Again, using the self-tapping screws that come in our kit. So it's a little bit tighter over here on the left side of our controller. So we're just using a quarter inch wrench here to tighten this down. So right now, we have both the screws pretty loose, which is why you see the controller sort of flopping all around. When we get these nice and snug, we can go ahead and set the tension here, set the angle that we want the controller to sit at, and then we can tighten both of those screws down to lock it in place. Set the angle here, and we'll just snug up both of those screws to lock it in place. And there we have it. So our last step here, as you can see, we have tons of extra wire hanging down here. We don't want that to get in the way of our brake pedal or anything. So we're gonna go ahead and just take a zip tie here. We'll secure it to a bracket or some existing wire up under the dash. And that's gonna do it guys for our look and installation of the Deconcha Voyager trailer brake controller here on our 2021 Jeep Gladiator.